stick Three, for a few minutes. Two, one. No, you won't, because I'll be bringing you in. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Topical Talkology. It's one of the... Um, Actually, it's one of the first times we've uh, managed to get together since this lockdown, so uh, we're not on Zoom anymore, but we are enjoying a coffee. But a coffee, uh, we're, we are doing some moderate social distancing. We have long leads to our microphones. Uh, we have a very special guest today. Good morning, I'm Alexi. Nice to, nice to see you, speak to you. Alexi, if, if our regular speak. listeners will recognise, he has attended the podcast in the past. So, so... I want to start because just before this, just before we started this podcast, we were having a conversation about the definition of nobility, or what it is like to be noble. And um, Theo had actually a few things to say about this, so I'm going to sort of throw the ball into his court and um, see what he actually wants to um, define as what it's like to be noble. The reason, the reason that we're talking about it is because it's come across with patients in terms of the journey they're taking to understand themselves and others. And that is what makes people do things and why they do things and how they can improve their lives. Now the, the concept of nobility itself, as you know, is, is, is also linked to royalty and it actually comes from the ancient Roman times, the noblesse, uh, where they were people of high status who effectively ran different parts of the country. They, they were severely uh, restricted by the power of the emperors, but after the fall of the Roman Empire, they effectively ran the whole place again for many, many centuries. Now, that's what we understand nobility, and in fact, we hold nobles up to a high standard of behavior, don't we? In fact, the royals, who are the highest nobles of all, um, we look to as role models of doing the right thing um, and indeed, Jordan Peterson says that for us to improve our lives, we have to address and have courage to do difficult things um, because it's right for us and right for the important ones around us. So that is a noble act. A noble act is doing something with, with a higher moral code than the average person. So, so, okay, so you say a higher moral code because I think noble behaviour doesn't necessarily represent... Um, that level of moral code. I mean, I think honourable is probably a better word to use. Well, honourable um, could be another version of noble, absolutely. Because, because the thing is, if you actually look at what's actually happened with Dominic Cummings and um, Gove, Michael Gove, in terms of they actually act in a noble manner when they are in Parliament and in front of the cameras and things like this, and uh, they put certain things out to tender. And it just so happens that the last tender uh, that was supposed to have happened was actually the, 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 the sole company that was actually going for it was their company that they were both heavily invested in. So is that, non, is that noble behavior? Is that moral behavior? Because they act in a form of nobility, but it's actually very inauthentic. Well, no, they, they pretend they, they have a veil of acting in a noble way of a, at a high moral level. But is different. Honour is what you consider to be an uh, if, if it's broken, you consider to be an affront to your values. But it's, your values are not necessarily a the moral code of the society. So the idea of mobility is a but high is, moral okay, code. Okay, so I'll, I'll ch- honor. I will challenge that. So nobility. So you look at the nobles, and uh, I'm, I'm even going to sound like a socialist here, which is going to be shocking. Uh, and it's really ma- it's mainly to sort of be devil's advocate here because when you talked about the nobles in in, um, in, in, in you know centuries past, if you want to say, did they behave did they behave with a high moral compass? Because actually, in those days, they actually really ruled the land. They actually set the rules. They set the law, and a lot of people actually suffered under their nobility. If you actually want to, that's right. So, 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 when you actually use the word noble and moral in the same sentence, I've got to say, I find that questionable. That's right, because so nobility are not do not necessarily behave in a moral way, but they should because they they are the standard setters. They they are the people from whom people take inspiration. You know, we we behave in the way that our leaders behave themselves. So if someone behaves in a shoddy manner and they're leading the country, then the population will. Can I, can I just butt in very, very quickly? I think, I think we are also getting mixed up with position and behavior. Mm-hmm. Because 
If I can have integrity and behave in a noble way, I can help somebody in the street, I can help an old lady, I can help a friend. That's a noble act. I have integrity, I stand for something. I'm not one of the sheep, so I, I stick to my moral compass, if you like. But you can have somebody who has inherited that title through generations or is part of nobility, and they can behave in a very... Uh, unethical in a very way, unethical, right. thank you, I couldn't find the word, in, in, in a very immoral way. Well, that's right. So, so that nobles, a no, a, an thank official you. noble doesn't necessarily behave in a noble way, but they should. That's the point I'm making. Now, the, the, there are three ways that people can behave in above the average moral code. Let me give you an example. My grandfather, who died when he was 108 years old, back in the 1920s, he was a successful businessman in Turkey, in Asia Minor, at the time of the uh, Turkish genocide of Greeks. And his entire village was rounded up by the Turkish guard and slung in prison, and they were going to be shot. And one of the... Uh, jailers recognized my grandfather and said when I was hungry your mother gave me food and I'm very grateful for that still can I help you in any way and he said yeah go and tell this highly important Turkish pasha that I'm in prison and my grandfather used to play cards and lose lots of money to these pashas so they considered him their friend on hearing a cash cow more likely that sounds well, well indeed well, <laughs> friend or cash cow same thing for some people and, and uh, I'm here, my friend. And wh so what happened is the, the captain of the guard was instructed on pain of death to release Nico immediately. So the captain of the guard calls him, wringing his hands in a servile manner and said, there's been a terrible mistake, Nico, you're free to go. My grandfather said, what about the rest of the villagers? He said, no, no, just, just you. And without thinking, my grandfather said, well, no, that doesn't sort of to me. I'm, take me back to my cell. And the, the guy ended up begging him to be reasonable. And my grandfather was unmovable. And in the end, they had to release the whole village. Now, that was a noble act because it was way above moral code. In other words, he put his life at risk. But he wasn't doing it out of bravery. It wasn't difficult for him because he himself was was quite far on the right shift of the Asperger's autistic spectrum. Um, and binary thinkers, what they do is they have the, the, the reassurance of certainty in their opinion. There's no gray area for them. For the average person, there's a lot of gray area, which is why they're often undecided. With, a, with an Asperger's autistic shift, there's no gray area. And, and of course, that can appear to be exceptionally noble, but it wasn't a difficult thing for him to do. And a bit and noble acts require courage. And, and so I, that's the first I, thing. I think we need to get some clarity on this, actually, because you, you talk yeah. about the word noble, and I'm, I, I, get what, I, I get what is being said, but at the same time, I think there needs to be some clarity as to what noble behaviour is and what, and what noble status is. Because a naval state doesn't make you make necessarily mean you actually behave in an honourable manner. No, Whereas a noble not. act is actually very different. So it's, a, it's, a, it's almost like a bastardised word. It is bastardised word. Um, that, that has been, that has been, I don't know, over the years, been manipulated for whatever purpose you actually want to. Look at Prince Andrew. So. I mean, he's, 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 has he behaved in a noble manner? Clearly not. So the thing is, but he's a nobleman. That's right. So... Do the two go hand in hand? No, but they should do because they, they're the standard setters in it. And therefore, a noble person... Well, what is and what should be are two different things. That's right. And a noble person, by definition, therefore, has to be held to a higher moral code. I'm just going to ask one question. You, in this lovely high street that we're in, you stop 25 people, 20 people and say, excuse me, can I talk to you about the word noble? I think it's going to be a very, very short conversation. I don't think it's a word that's used anymore. I think I don't think it's a word that's, that is actually understood anymore. If you say, do you do things with integrity, do you do things with a moral compass, you'll have a conversation. Or if courage. You, exactly. If you talk about noble or then extend the word to nobility, you then may have a different conversation about the apathy towards nobility, the queen, the current state and so on. Well, that's right. And that's, that's, a symptom, that's a symptom of, um, of falling standards, of falling professionalism. Look, you got to turn back. I mean, even if you actually look at um, America, 
when um, you know when 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 they actually fought for independence was it a noble act in terms of how they actually approached it yes but were they noble in a lot of their behaviors because it is questionable because they accepted slavery as a um, as a way of life over there to or in some ways to actually maintain a level of nobility which is why they, which is why black people were never seen as a full person um, and the thing is the dem and even so all that from started off in the fact that it was a democratic party and it continues to this day they they portray themselves in the media and everything to be noble and actually be interested in um, in, in, in the best whereas the Republican Party are the ones who actually are seen as the racists they are seen as the capitalists they are seen as and you've got to consider that when the Republican Party was actually formed in 1860 um, it was actually known as the anti-slavery party was the anti-slavery party so 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 all all this and all our interpretation our perceptions of what's going on between whether it's the nobility or whether it's uh, i'll get to you in a second alexi the nobility and all in terms of parties and things like this and what side you actually sit on is all matter of interpretation which is actually then manipulated and, and you know you want to call it fake media but it is portrayed very much in the media like that is it not indeed so I got distracted. Um, then we can talk about noble behaviour. Let's link it to the, the the CV the CV word. You know the coronavirus. Let's. Uh, I, I could argue for the cat amongst the pigeons, Mr. Boris Johnson, as I call him, Joris Bonson. Um, when he started the the whole the managing the whole affair, was he noble in the beginning and the way he behaved? Is he noble now? Uh, how the how the ratings have changed now from when he first started leading this campaign, this government campaign to now. Thing is, if you if you define him as acting to, uh, as a to a higher moral code, the answer is he's been entirely spineless and useless. Actually, just 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 before just before we go into that, do you want to do you want to give a little bit of context, right, with regards to Boris Johnson as to where he was and where he where he is now, Alexis? Um, I think in the beginning, when it was easy to give them a simple message of stay at home. It was very easy for what seemed to come across really well as a speaker and as a leader. He was quite, you know, reassuring, Churchill-esque. There were a lot of references to Churchill, to, to, to creating a legacy, which I've listened to your podcast, as you can tell. Um, but as time has gone on, there has been a, as you've put it very nicely, the, I think the vertebral, the spine, has become a bit more jelly-like. And he's become... Uh, indecisive uh, and actually it's become the opposite of what I thought he was going to carry on being exactly. and the Dominic Cummings example is a great example because you talk about moral code and and behaving in a noble way and that's a very sort of slightly gray area of what should he have got rid of him you know if he's the exception to the rule then should we all then do what we want that then questions him as a leader questions his moral code and then you start to look at him in general as a human being also, you see, he's, he's really style over substance, isn't he? Yeah. Is the obvious conclusion. For instance, uh, he models himself on the image of Winston Churchill. Mm. Now, Winston Churchill, of course, is said to be one of our greatest leaders because he took us through the Second World War. But actually, he was not a likable person. He was highly disagreeable. And they got rid of him after, immediately after the Second World War. So, he well, although, hold on a second. But Winston Churchill okay. did noble acts. He wasn't a noble person. He was a dislikable person. Yeah, but you could actually say that. Mm. It, actually, it's an, an interesting to say that because mm. he was actually born into nobility in some ways. I mean, wasn't... Um, if you actually look at his background, um, there, there is very much blue blood, if you actually want to call it. And, and, the, and, the, and the thing is, look, he, he was in the political wilderness for about 20 years and he was a great wartime prime minister. Um, as a wartime prime minister, as a peacetime prime minister, was actually a very different matter. Well, that's it. See, uh, but we should, as I said, we should also be clear that even though he actually did lose, he did actually win again mm -hmm. um, a, a second time. So, so it's also how people were feeling after the Second World War um, and how it was actually impacting their lives personally, despite of actually was the fact that he actually won. But people seem to forget that as well, though. 
But, but I think what is interesting, if you look back at the history of the Second World War, when he was crying out in the 30s and saying, please listen to me, uh, please listen to me, I'm warning you against this really, really nasty German guy over there. He's